ano sa pagka, ano ang pagkakaintindi nyo doon sa salitang gamification? Sige nga, you can make use of our group chat for that. Please feel free to send in your thoughts, your own definition of what gamification is all about. We have about 50 people within our room right now. So I would assume na uh, marami ang sasagot dito. Ayan, pinangunahan na ni Ms. Jorina making processes fun. What about the rest? How do you understand gamification? It's an interactive process. Okay. Um, good, good, good. What about the rest po? How would you define gamification? Now, I am asking this question because a lot of people tend to have an incorrect notion about what gamification is all about. Okay, using game-like processes to teach or introduce new learning. And I'd like to em emphasize that one, game-like processes. A lot of people kasi think that when you say gamification, it's using games lang. Okay? When you have training and you have, let's say, icebreakers and um, structured learning experiences, people think that that's already gamification. That's not gamification. That's just introducing gameplay into an existing process or procedure. Gamification is more than that. And gamification is a wide topic, okay, na very rarely actually na, na gagamit in order to make HR processes and procedures more fun. Now, the thing about gamification is, and um, most likely nakaka-relate kayo dito, when you were young, when you were just starting out understanding what the world is all about. You were actually gamifying your life experiences. Okay? When you play, when you're given a reward for something in order to promote that behavior, those are actually game-like or gamified processes. Okay? And the thing about gamification is that it relies on the endorphins, the dopamine that you get because you are happy. When you are happy, the more likely you are able to understand and learn from something. And that is what gamification is all about. Now, as I've mentioned, games are different from gamification. Gamification is all about using gaming principles in order to make a process more interesting. Gamification satisfies fundamental human desires. Okay, games only exist to entertain individuals, but gamification satisfies fundamental human desires. And what are our um, fundamental human desires? If you would look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, isa doon sa mga kailangan natin is um, the feeling of belongingness. And gamification does just that. It also rewards us for being able to accomplish something. It bolsters our sense of community because gamification ensures that everyone is able to interact with each other as well as play with people around them. Okay, pag sinabi natin play, hindi ito yung maglalaro talaga, but the concept of being able to work with people around them, that is what gamification is all about. It also forges emotional connection, Okay. It is dependent on the interests of the people involved. Okay? It also relieves cognitive overload. Oftentimes, when we try to get people to do things, we, tayo sa HR, we have a memo, we have a policy, we have a memo, we implement, we tell them what's all about, we orient them. We sometimes forget that this is actually overloading our employees cognitively. They have to um, understand all of this, keep all of these things in mind, and make sure that they adhere to it. And the thing is, whenever you push people to do something that they don't understand, the tendency is for the employees to push back. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, hirap tayo minsan. Meron kaming policy na ganito, pa, pinapapirmahan namin, ayaw pumirma ng mga employees, ang daming questions, because they don't understand it. So they push back. But when you make use of gamification, it makes things fun, it makes things light, and it makes the employees see things from a different perspective. Okay? Ito magandang halimbawa. Nung maliliit kayo, pag inutusan kayo ng nanay ninyo na magluto, okay? Or maghugas ng pinggan. Huwag na magluto. Maghugas ng pinggan. Anak, meron mga pinggan dyan. Hugasan mo. Tapos sa time kumain, hugasan mo. Or anak, 
Tapos nang kumain, lahat ng mga pinggan doon sa lamesa, dali mo sa laba. Ang tendency natin ng mga bata tayo is tama rin. Mamaya na, mamaya na. Yan, di ba? Kaya, nag- kaya nagagalit ang mga magulang. Mamaya na, mamaya na. But, ano ang nilalaro natin ng bata tayo? When the parents are not around, anong nilalaro natin? Bahay-bahayan. At anong kasama sa bahay-bahayan? Maghugas ng pinggan, magluto, maglinis. We are um, replicating, okay? Or we, we are doing what we are seeing with our, from our parents. But, ba, pero bakit paglaro? Ang dali. Walang tinatamad. Ginagawa natin, eh same din naman yung proseso. Siguro minus lang yung actual na lababo at pinggan. Same lang naman yung proseso. Bakit pag bata tayo, tinatamad tayo ng uh, tinatamad tayo magluto. Pag inuutusan tayo, tinatamad tayo, tinatamad tayong mag-aral, tinatamad tayo na na magbasa. Pero pag naglaro kayo ng teacher teacheran, aba ang galing, ikaw pa nagtuturo ng 1 plus 1. Bakit? Because when you are being told to do something, it results to a cognitive overload. But when you input gaming principles into what is supposed to be a cognitive overload, your brain, which is a very, very powerful muscle, okay, nag-iiba ang perspective. The brain, the, the, um, in, in, in using the gaming principles and what is supposed to be something that we don't like, okay, actually allows our brain to shift the point of view. Nag-iiba, ng ting- nag-iiba tayo ng tingin. Kaya nga, Pwede tayong maglaro ng bahay-bahayan, teacher-teacher, pero pag actual na teacher at actual bahay, tinatamad tayo. Kasi yung isa, overload. Yung isa, it's fun. Masaya. It's something that bolster sense of community kasi kasama mo yung mga kalaro mo. There's emotional connection. That is actually a good way of looking at gamification. Lastly, gamification also sustains desired behavior. If you've seen Harry Potter, okay, you would notice that consistently from book one to the last book, okay, meron silang point system, okay, and they get rewarded for doing something. That is a very basic example of gamification. And because there are points being given for bravery, for intelligence, for, for um, knowing how to stand up to your friends because there are points given to that. Those actually sustains that behavior. So all throughout the book, okay, see Neville would, would really know how to stand up against his friends if, they, if he thinks they're doing wrong. Harry Potter would really um, show bravery, would show courage kahit na... Um, may mga times na takot na takot na siya, he would still show bravery and courage. And no matter the, the odds are or the, the situation, Hermione will always make sure that, you know, she provides a different perspective because na, na, um, na, na re-reward yung behavior na yon. And that is what gamification is all about. Now, including or, or, or using gamifi- gamification principles within HR policies and procedures is something that is not heard of here in the Philippines, but is actually being practiced in other parts of the world and in Southeast Asia. In fact, in companies involved in, um, in the IT industry and in the gaming industry, the use of gamification has been around for quite some time. But implementing it is a bit tricky because just like with anything else, gamification is, can only be applied to a select few. And the people within that organization needs to be ready for it because gamification will require a lot of changes. Now, the first thing that you have to understand about gamification is that there are different player types or employee personas when you create a gamification um, framework. Okay, And you have to understand these player types because these are also the types of employees that you have. Now, in, um, in Bartle's types of players, there are actually four na na-identify niya. So kasama dito si explorer, si achiever, si socializer, at si killer. When we say killer, hindi ito yung mamamatay tawa. And this is not something that should be viewed negatively. It's just that for the, a lack of better term, ang tawag sa kanya ni Bartle 
is that killer yung pinakahuling type of player. So ano-ano ba itong mga types of players na to? Explorers are those um, players um, na as just like what their name says, they like to explore, they like to dig around the game. You would come across employees who would like to question or ask about things. Okay? And who would like to push boundaries just so they can understand ano ba yung limitations. The experience itself is the objective. If the gameplay, ibig sabihin, yung inyong gamification framework actually makes it enjoyable for them, then the explorers would sustain their interest within their framework. If you have explorers within your employees, people who would like to ensure na na -e enjoy nila yung experience, okay? you need to make sure that the process, the framework, na check nyo sa kanila if they are okay with it. One thing that makes gamification successful is making sure that the gamers, the players themselves, have input on how the framework, the process, the experience should be like. Okay? With explorers, they like accumulating points or getting badges. Sa gamification kasi, you don't just put games and then reward them. Or you don't just have activities and then reward the, the players. Meron tong short-term at long-term approach. Short-term approach, they get to accumulate points. They get badges. Okay? They get trophies. May mga ganun yan. Now, they don't need to have the physical badge or the physical tro trophy. If you listen to what Jarina mentioned earlier, AI is very much in line with gamification. Because gamification makes use of platforms where everyone can see how everyone is doing, a platform that can also help ensure na yung mga trophies and badges that they are able to collect and accumulate can be easily seen. If you are active, for example, in Reddit okay, or in any, any forum, you would notice that the more interactive or the more active a person is within that forum, the more likely they would have another, a number of badges. So they would have, for example, um, conversationalist. They would have um, something like first blood. They would have things like that. If you're part of Philippines HR group, you would also see this. So you would see people who are considered as um, conversationalist kasi sila yung mahilig mag-start ng conversation within the group. You would also see people who are visualizers. They like to post pictures to the group. Those are actually simple forms of gamification. Okay? And explorers, the explorer player type or the explorer employee type, they are the ones who like collecting points, collecting badges, or collecting yung mga trophies. Okay? The experience is more important to them. They are excited with the short-term goals or yung kumbaga pag, kumbaga pag naglalaro kayo, ito yung mga, mga side stories, mga, um, mga kailangan gawin, may, may iiksing mga, mga challenges, side challenges na kailangan gawin. They, they, um, they like that. Okay? So if the, the long-term plan for your gamification is to get them to be conscious about their career path, about their learnings, if meron kang maliliit, mga short-term, na mga challenges for them, like for example, being able to attend 10 trainings in a month. Mas nag -e enjoy sila doon kesa doon sa long-term na goal. Okay? So which means that when you create a gamification program and you're working on short-term goals, the short-term goals should support the long-term goal. Okay? Now, eto, si Achiever naman, which is our second type of player, Eto yung mga competitors naman, or competitive. Okay? They like to compete. They, they are very keen on seeing where they are at at the moment. So this type of players or employees, basta't nakikita nilang nag-move sila, mas nag-e-enjoy sila with the framework. Which now means that your gamification program should also have a way for you to monitor where everyone is at how many points have been accumulated at ano yung mga badges and trophies that everyone has already um, gained or have access to. At itong mga trophies and badges na ito should not be just for display. Dapat may impact ito dun sa points. 
that is how the achievers um that's how you sustain your own, your own um, interest ng achievers with the gamification program. So, for example, they were able to get the badge known as, let's say, First Blood kasi sila yung pinakaunang nakakuha ng point for a specific area. Okay? That should have an impact on their points. Hindi lang ito badge. So, if, for example, they were able to get 10 badges, that means that whatever points they have, they can um, th those badges will multiply it by 3. So meron ka ngayon mga multipliers or meron kang mga short uh, short challenges that if they're able to accomplish that, they, it adds a number of points. So ganun mo siya uh, po pwedeng isustain uh, for your achiever type of employee. Now, unlike explorers, these are um, na, na okay na sa kalabas at, excuse me, experience ay okay sa kanila. Si achiever, they like being rewarded for completing tasks. Okay? So, hindi lang basta experience. Any task that you give them, be it short-term or long-term, kailangan may points yan. These are the types of employees who would most likely ask you, what's in it for me? What do I get out of it? So, pag inutusan mo sila, let's say, sinabihan mo na, oh, um, Pedro. Okay? Pedro, ikaw ang in charge of project na to. They are the first type, uh, they are the ones who would ask, what's in it for me? Do I get additional bonus for this? Ganun sila. So if you're seeing employees who are like that, most likely they are the achiever type of employees. Okay? Earning recognition is very important to them. So if they can see their name dun sa taas ng leaderboard, yung tracker ninyo sa kung nasa ang rank ng bawat employee, yun ang magandang way para masustain nyo yung interest nila with your gamification framework. Okay. Now, leaderboards, um, although we mentioned that you need to have platforms, leaderboards um, can also be done kahit na wala kayong online platform. All you have to do is have a, let's say, a bulletin board that gets updated in real time every time na merong ma-earn na points bawat employees at na nag update kagad siya sa kung ano na yung ranking niya. Now, another player type is the socializer. The socializers Compared to the achievers, their, foku, um, their focus is not on accumulating points and prestige. They, um, they are more interested in the interaction. So si socializers, hindi mo maasahan yan when it comes to individual na mga activities. These are the people who um, flourish more if points are given for group work. So whenever... A group is, is, is tasked to do something. Sila yung talagang excited and would rally the rest of the team so that madadagdagan pa yung points. So sila yung tipo, they keep tab on everyone's points and make sure that yung group, not just one person, yung group nila ang may pinakamataas na number of points. It's not that they don't care about winning. They actually care about winning, but they would want it to be a more socialized approach, group project, kumbaga, because they don't want people within their team to feel na parang walang contribution. Okay? They want everyone to feel na, ay, lahat kami ay naghirap dito. So sila yung nagrarally sa team, sila yung talagang buong grupo. They don't like it when they see competition within the team kasi they view it as um, uh, anti, kumbaga, anti socializer ang dating, anti group ang dating. So, ayo ayo nila nung ganun. So, make sure that when you create a gamification framework, it provides points for um, individual contribution. It also provides points for group contributions. Okay? Now, killers, eto ang pinaka competitive sa lahat. Kung si achiever ay competitive na, mas matindi si killer. Because killers, don't care if other people like them or hindi. If si achiever ay matanong ng what's in it for me, si killer ay matanong ng bakit siya may points but ako wala. Okay? So you need to make sure that you are very clear on when you're going to give points and when you're going to reduce points, remove points, withheld, withhold points. Okay? Sila yung mas ma-question about the process, the procedure. Wala silang pakialam kung sino yung tatamaan as long as okay, they get the respect and the authority. Okay? So if you need project leaders, healers are the best people for that. Okay? If you need people who can strategically think on what needs to be done, healers are the best for that. 
Okay? They can work with any of the other player type, but the other player types would have to understand that they need to follow killer. If you put two killers together, mag-aawa yan. If you put a killer and an achiever, mag-aawa yan. So if, but if you put a killer, a socializer, and an explorer, mag-flourish yan. Okay? Because the explorer, the socializer, will depend on the killer in terms of decision making. So you may mga leadership potential, um, and these are the type of people, not leadership potential, but people who are really good at independent contribution, and they really shine, and people can come up to them, yung mga subject matter experts nyo, yung talagang technical knowledge yan, um, hindi sila ganong kagaling on people management, those people are actually killers. Okay? At least the player type, ang tawag sa kanila ay killer. Okay? Now, kung si Bartel ay merong apat, types, apat na types ng um, player, si Mark, um, Mark Zuski naman ay merong iba pang types na dinagdag. So you, have your, you still have your socializer, you still have your achiever, the killer is now the, the player, but you also have the philanthropist, the disruptor, and the free spirit. Okay? Now, eto, mga dagdag lang na mga konsepto ito. Okay? But when it comes to gaming principles, usually it's the four types of players by Bartel that is followed rather than the types of players by Mar Mark Zoski. Kasi itong kay Mark Zoski, masyado siyang marami with some of them actually overlapping with each other. So for example, a philanthropist most likely is also a free spirit and is combined with a socializer. Okay? So halos pareho lang. So hindi masyadong ginagamit itong kay Mark Zowski, mas ginagamit even in the gaming community, mas ginagamit yung player types ni Bartel. Okay? Now, these types of uh, players are only guides on how you can craft your whole game uh, your gaming uh, gamification framework okay guide lang sila kung paano mo siya ikakraft yung buong gamification framework mo doesn't mean na kailangan mo i-identify isa-isa it just means na kaya natin dinidiscuss yung employer types is that uh, employee types or player types kailangan lahat yang apat na yan ay meron kayong way dun sa inyong framework to sustain yung kanilang interest with the gamification framework. Okay? Now, when you create a gamification program or a gamification framework, there are a lot of elements that you have to consider. So, um, alihin lang natin, isa-isahin natin kasi baka ma-overwhelm kayo. Si gamification program or si gamification framework, hindi ito basta't maglalagay kayo ng games, yun na yun. Hindi. Okay? That's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Second, it has to cater to all types of employees. Okay? Socializer yan, achiever yan, killer yan, o kung ano pa man. It has to address whatever motivates your employees. Okay? Third, you have to understand if you are really in need of gamification. Because gamification is not for everyone. Okay? When you create a gamification framework, there are certain elements that you have to include. Okay? First is curiosity and mystery. There has to be something that they look forward to. If I clear this, if I become this, what happens? Okay? Now, when you create gamification framework, sabi natin kanina, di ba, may trophies, may badges. If you're able to accomplish this, you get a trophy. If you're able to accomplish this, you're able to get a badge. Pwede rin wala na trophies, badges ng lahat. Wala namang, wala namang problema doon. However, there should be levels. Okay? May levels dapat yan. Hindi po pwede na 10 years na siya employee Pero hindi niya alam kung nasaan siya. Eh, every year naman nagbabago na nagbabago yung leaderboard. No. That's the short-term approach, your leaderboard for, 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 for year. You would also need to have something that would track pag matagal na siyang, naghahan, uh, matagal na siyang um, connected with the company. Pag naka-first year, second year, you can call that person newbie. 
pag naka or novice para talagang in line with gamification. And then pag kunwari 5 years na siya to 10 years with the company, pwede mo na siyang tawagin na soldier. Okay? Pag lumagpas doon, pwede mo siyang tawagin na wizard. Okay? Iba-iba yan. Iba-iba ang uh, definition bawat levels. And whenever they clear a level, dapat may impact din yun sa points. Okay? So para meron silang something to look forward to. And meron dapat kayong mga surprise quest, kumbaga. It's not something that you announce ng matagal. It could be something that you announce for the day. Okay, guys? Uh, may announcement kami sa inyo. Short quest for the day. Whoever gets to the office uh, or whoever was the earliest in the office gets additional 10 points. Dapat meron kayong mga surprise quest sa kanila. Okay? Para lagi sila, it keeps them on their toes. But those surprise quests has to be connected to a behavior that you are trying to promote. So if for example, you're trying to promote attendance. Okay? And nakikita mo na ang dami kasing nalilate sa amin eh. Paano kaya gagawin to? So you can do a short quest. Okay guys? We have a short quest for today. And it doesn't have to be announced um, beforehand. We have a short quest for today. Whoever got to the office the earliest gets 10 points, gets a badge, gets a small prize. So ngayon, hindi ka naglagay ng attendance bonus, which, you know, um, because it's already a policy, it becomes demandable. Hindi ka naglagay ng ganun. Naglagay ka ng something na hindi sila sure if tomorrow meron pa or kung kailan ulit magkakaroon. Because it's a surprise quest. Okay? Or let's say, today yung quest mo is about attendance. Next week naman, ang quest mo is all about reports generation. Okay, okay guys, short quest for today. First person who's able to submit the report, clear, complete, concise report, gets additional points, gets a reward, gets a badge. Okay, and the reward could, should be something tangible. Okay, so even without a policy, a specific policy saying na, ah, pag nag-submit kayo ng reports, ito yung makukuha ninyo. You're able to give them something. Okay? Remember yung palagi natin pinoproblema, eh kasi pag nagbigay na kami ng ganitong benefit, hindi na namin pwedeng maalis because it becomes diminution of benefits. Well, eto ang gamification framework. You just need to have the framework in place. Anything that you give arbitrarily, not really arbitrarily, but you give every now and then, it does not become diminution of benefits because this is something that is born out of this framework. Okay? So, again, you're now um, promoting curiosity and mystery. Hindi ngayon nila alam kailan kaya ulit mayroong short quest. Kailan kaya ulit mangyayari ito. Because they don't know when the quest will happen and they can get a reward, they try to ensure that behavior so that if it happens, meron silang makukuha. And you can repeat the short quest. Pwede ngayon, short quest mo is attendance. Two weeks, three weeks from now, short quest ka ulit about attendance. Gamification will also work if you have progress or feedback. The employees need to see where they are at, how they are doing, how many points they have earned, what's happening to those points, what, uh, what would happen at the end of the year once they have accumulated all of these points. Okay? And they need to see as well, nasa na mga kalaban po? Nasa na yung department na to? Yung group na ito? Within our group, sino may pinakamaraming points? Okay? And it also needs to have time pressure. Now, you can set the whole framework for one year, but your short quest, your surprise quest, time pressure dapat yung mga yan. This needs to be accomplished within the next 15 minutes. Kung sinong pinakaunang makakapag-submit nito will get additional points and a reward. Or um, whoever is able to sustain this for three months will get points and additional rewards. Whoever is the first one to do this will get first blood, additional points, and a reward. Okay, And you need to provide, you need to have a description for each of the reward you're going to give. Okay, Let's say, uh, or, or the, the reward program that you're going to give them. So let's say first blood. First blood, you can call it for any activity na kung sino yung pinakaunang makakagawa noon sa kanya, na, sa kanya yung premyo. Okay, so for example, in our case, in Uprush, we actually have a gamification, sort of a gamified approach to things. The first person who is able to bring in X thousand of sales 
Okay? Gets first blood, gets additional rewards, gets additional points. And the points get to be converted at the end, uh, at uh, any time, actually not end of the year, any time it can get, um, they can use that to purchase, for example, merchandises, additional lead credits, and whatnot. And then at the end of the year, Again, whoever has accumulated the most number of points gets to be the employee of the year, the game changer of the year, or whatever else you would like to call. Yung kung ano man yung mapapananin niya. Okay? It should promote competition. If there is one thing that's basic to all humans is that we are competitive. Iba-iba lang tayo ng level. Okay? We want to always prove ourselves. And how do we do that? By making sure na tayo yung mananalo. Okay? Kay takbuhan pa yan, kay uh, langit lupa pa yan, kay patintero pa yan, we want to win. Okay? So gamification should have that kind or should support that kind of approach. Okay? And when we say competition, of course, they're competing for something. You cannot engage employees with your gamification framework, with getting them to work, if there's nothing that they can look forward to at the end of the year, okay? You would also need to have guilds or teams. Guilds can be departments or it can also be group of people, okay? They can create their own guilds. Let's say you have a certain project, everyone involved in that project can be, co uh, can be considered as, let's say, um, Guild of France, okay? They can create their own names for that, give them that, ability to create their own names. Because the more that they are involved in how they would form the experience, the more they are, um, they would be interested in being part of the gamification program. Get them to explore. Give them a lot of options on how they can add points. So this should be something that is not just related to whatever behavior that you are promoting, but whatever um, area or project you're having difficulties with. with. So for example, in Game Loft, we had um, one concern before na sobra lang, sobrang konti yung interested to attend on learning, uh, outside learning, external learning, or external um, external trainings. Hindi sila masyado ma-attend on. So with gamification, we actually gave them points for attending those. If they're able to register, Finish the whole session, they get points. If they're able to cascade their learnings inside the company, they get points. If they are able to create the project based on what they have learned, they get additional points. Get them to explore the different ways on how they can get those points that later on they can convert into different merchandises or they can use to become an employee of the year. Allow them to customize. Okay, from the name of the guild to the names of the different trophies, allow them to customize. Okay, give them the option to give uh, credits or to give points to people within their team who they think have contributed a lot to the growth of the team or to the, to the progress of the team. Okay, provide them with challenges that are both long-term, short-term, um, na kailangan nilang gawin. Okay, the, the success of gamification rests on how interesting those challenges are. And those challenges need to be in line with corporate values and with the behavior that you would like to push for your team members. Give them quests as well, side quests, things that they can do that are not necessarily in line with the behavior that you are promoting, but answers a specific uh, problem that you are currently facing. So for example, you have problems with sales, ang baba ng sales namin, okay? You can create a short quest for that, okay? Anyone who is able to um, bring in X thousand of pesos within the next three months, they get to have a badge or a trophy, okay? Uh, pawagin natin yung trophy na yun na ano, for example, kung sino may naglalaro ng, ng Diablo dyan, you can call it Deckard Kane Award, okay? So pupwedeng, pupwedeng ganun. Okay, and you can have, again, as I've mentioned, surprise quests, things that they are not expecting, and then you give it to them, okay, in order to sustain yung kanilang interest with your gamification framework. Allow them to collect and trade. 
not just trade for merchandises, but trade with each other. Okay, I'm going to give you 10 points. Akin na lang yung badge mo on this. Kasi yung badge na yan, it increases everything by 10 points. It adds 10 points. Okay? E naghahabol kami ng points. Exchange deal tayo. Allow them to do that. Okay? Kasi now, you are also um, promoting now collaboration. Paano natin marireach itong isang goal na to? Itong goal na to without sacrificing my team members or without sacrificing the other employees within the group. Allow them to share knowledge. Okay? Every now and then, um, in relation to your gamification framework, send them newsletters or emails or create po posters, trivia posters that get them to understand what the points are, what's the reason for this badge, and even the characters that you might have in mind. Okay? Everything has to be in line with the gamification framework. Now, if you choose to name everyone as, let's say, peasant, soldier, prince, king, paragon, or kung ano pa man, okay? Everything has to be in line with that, okay? And you have to create badges that can easily be seen by everyone because that is something um, of pride for them, okay? Make sure that you also have a good platform, an innovative platform. If you cannot have one, at least have a sort of Excel file that is available to everyone that gets updated quickly, real time, um, each time that uh, uh, points are being added to a person. Okay? Pero pinakamaganda pa rin is to have an innovative platform for that. There are companies who can help you create mga gamification platforms simply because um, it, this only involves database. Lang naman. And um, mas, mas malamang pa yung front-end na design kesa do sa back-end. Kasi yung sa back-end, database lang ang katapat. Okay? Allow the employees to vote for someone. Vote, vote them out or kung ano pa mang voting. Okay? So that... Um, anything that uh, everything that is being done by the employees, merong palaging feedback. So if, for example, you posted um, a question, everyone's answering, best, best answer, vote po kayo, pinakamataas na votes. Okay, do sa answer na yon, that is what we're going to do. Or we're going to have this quest, ano yung maganda, um, maganda natin ibigay na, na reward. Allow them to vote, allow them to voice their opinion. And of course, as I've mentioned, you would need to have a leaderboard where everyone can see where they are at. And lastly, physical rewards and prizes. If you don't have a physical reward or prize, mawawala yung reason why you have gamification in the first place. Now, with rewards and prizes also comes penalty. So one thing that we did when we had the gamification framework for game law is that we provided prizes, additional points for everything that they accomplish. However, if they get a disciplinary action, it actually reduces their number of points. If it's written warning, you get a reduction of about five points. If it's a suspension, you get a reduction of about 15 points. And if you get terminated, of course, cleared lahat ng mga points mo. Okay? So, po pwede yun. so not only is it rewarding behavior, it is also penalizing the player for anything na hindi in line dun sa kung ano ba yung expected na behavior from them. Okay? Ayan. Sige, tingnan nga natin. So far ba? Naintindihan pa? Can I get a quick thumbs up? Kung okay pa tayo? Kung buhay pa yung 50 na nasa kwarto right now? Okay, thanks, Sherilyn and Rowella and Mary Jane. And Jorina, okay, and Amy, okay. I hope the rest are also still listening in. Medyo mabigat na concept si, si gamification because this, this is not, thank you, Lucero. This, uh, Vanessa, may atay pangalan yun. Balik na natin pagkabasa ko. Gamification is not something that you can readily implement just because you want to implement it. Which brings me to my next topic. When you are doing gamification, some things that you have to keep in mind. Number one, okay? If created incorrectly, it will create a false set of incentives, okay? People will think that they are getting rewarded for something, okay? Or that if, um, something, some actions are incentivized, okay? Tapos um, magsiset ngayon siya ng unreal expectation that if they do something, they will automatically get incentives. 
So the power of gamification rests on having a framework that is prepared correctly and have gone through a number of reviews bago ini implement. You cannot have this, you cannot create the framework and immediately upon upon um, submission to your boss, implement you again. It takes time. When we created the gamification program for Game Lost Philippines, it actually took us a number of months be before we were able to implement it. And the implementation itself ay nakabeta mood pa muna nung nagsimula kami. Okay, kasi we wanted to see how the employees will react if there's going to be a change. And then if there is, then we do a full implementation. Okay, so you need to make sure that you go through this carefully. Not only do you need to be careful with the framework, you also need to be careful with how you market the framework. Just because it gets approved doesn't mean na implementation kagad. So what we did, we actually had a series of marketing events to push yung gamification program. Okay? There is also a risk for exclusion of other learning methods. The employees now will only learn if they are being rewarded. That's one of the um, disadvantage of gamification. However, if you're able to tie all types of learning to your gamification program, then there should be no problem. For example, when we had a um, coaching and mentoring program, anyone who applies as a mentor or a mentee gets additional points. Mentee gets five points, mentor gets 10 points. Okay, But they need to create an actual mentorship agreement and there needs to be a change in behavior. Okay? So, dapat meron ding output report na mga ganung requirements before they can actually get the points. Not, uh, hindi lang yun dahil nag-sign up sila, they already have the points. Now, you keep hearing na ano ba yung points na sinasabi niya. With gamification kasi, each activity, each behavior, each action will get the person a point. So, if for example, for this month, wala akong late, then I get points. If for this month, um, I was able to attend one training, then I get points. If I attend the Christmas party, I get points. If I attend a training program sa labas, I get points. If I come back and cascade the learning, create my own um, training program based on what I have learned, I get points for that. If I get a certification program, like what um, HR Calabarzon is offering, if I, for example, I become a certified HR business partner, um, once I have received or I have proof that I already have the certification, I just need to send it to HR and then I get points also for that. If I am able to make, let's say you created Six Sigma, you, you were able to get a certification for Six Sigma, Green Belt, and that would include a creating a, a um, sort of project as part of your certification. If I am able to implement that, then I get additional points for that. Ganun mo ginagawa si gamification. So, he, um, nagkakaroon lang ng risk of exclusion ng iba pang learning methods if sa isang learning method ka lang nag-focus. Nag so, each time that you have a new learning method, whether it's self-paced, um, mentoring program, mentoring and coaching program, external trainer, internal trainer, brown bag session, you need to have points for that. Kung ano yung mga alam niyo na existing na learning methods. In Game Loft, when we had, um, it's a good thing that we also had an online learning platform. So whenever someone applies for a particular topic, it automatically adds points to their account. Okay, do sa kanilang gamification account. Automatic yun kasi naka-link na sila. Ang kailangan lang na manually idagdag is if yung training is outside or hindi siya self-paced, self hindi siya kaya mag-sign up doon sa website. Okay? It can also ruin motivation if it relies heavily on money. Which means that when you create the reward for the gamification framework, it doesn't have to be about the money. In fact, in our case, we made um, um, a game loft, not, not a brush. We created the framework so that at the end of the year, when you have all of these points and you want to convert these points, hindi lang pera. True, if you are the game changer of the year, you get the jacket, you get 5,000 pesos gift certificate, so hindi rin pera, and then you get a plaque that's given. Okay? But along the way, if, for example, you accumulated 100 points and you would like it exchanged for a ball pen bearing the logo of Game Loft, you can do that. 
Or if, for example, ikaw yung tipo na mahilig mag-leave and naubos mo na yung leave mo, you can actually convert some of your points to leave credits. And it doesn't expire as long as you're an employee, you get to use that. If you resign, of course, it gets cleared. Hindi mo na siya mako-convert. So you need to convert it before you resign. Okay? Hindi kami nag-rely heavily on money because if we rely heavily on money, action ngayon is i-relate -re nila with money. And sometimes money is not the only thing that you can reward people with. You can reward them with other tangible items. You can reward them with benefits, intangible benefits. And you can also reward them with access to more learning programs. Okay? So yun na yung mga kailangan yung tandaan when you are going to create a gamification program. Lastly, okay, ang, ang iksino aking talk, I... I Created it this way so that if you have questions, because I know that the gamification program is a very, um, very high level means and approach on how you're going to do or handle HR. Okay. So lastly, how do you now create your own gamification framework? So you start first with, ano ba yung corporate values niyo? Okay. You need to be thoroughly familiar with your corporate values. If these are your corporate values, let's say integrity, honesty, um, ano pa ba? Uh, customer centricity. If these are your values, what are the behavioral indicators nitong mga values na to? Okay? Behavioral indicators of these values, not behaviors. Behavioral indicators of these values. So if I say integrity, how does your company define integrity and what do you consider as a display of integrity? Okay, if you're able to describe the behavior that you would like employees to have, then that, it, that can be um, converted into one of the activities that they can do where they will get additional points. So for example, if your company is trying to launch a learning culture, okay, then you can have points for each time that an employee comes up to HR or their immediate head because they want to attend a specific training without being told to attend that training. Okay, so po pwedeng may ganon. Okay, so when you know the behavioral indicators, you can easily um, enumerate ano ba yung mga activities na kailangan in place or you want to promote in line with those behaviors. Okay, and then what incentives do you have? Short term, long term for your side quest, for your surprise quest. Ano yung mga incentives that you're willing to give? Now, be careful with this. Do not ask people outside of your company. Sabi nga natin, di ba? Uh, meron kayong mga types of players na mas may engage sila if they are actually able to provide their input. So ask your employees themselves and check what kind of incentives they would want to have. Okay. Consider also how you're going to monitor everything. Gamification requires a lot of logistics. You need a person who can monitor all of the points. You need a way to monitor those points and ensure that you do not give a point twice for the same thing. You need to make sure that the points are visible to everyone and everyone can see the standing of each other and the standing of their team. So dapat may ganun din. Okay, so you have to consider all of that. Now, let's say you would want to gamify your whole HR policy and procedure. Ask yourself, why do you want to do that? Okay, I mentioned earlier that gamification is not for everyone. If you're going to apply this to Gen Xers and Boomers, not all of them will like it. Okay, especially if the approach Okay, the activities that you want them to do is not in line with the kind of upbringing that they have. Gen Xers and um, boomers, kung meron pang paman sa inyong company, tend to be more uh, likely to, to adhere to structured approach, okay, traditional approach. So how do you gamify that? Okay, ano yung gusto mo ngayon na reward na behavior for them? For Gen Xers, for example, if you want them to be more flexible, Give them rewards for being flexible, but define what flexibility is, and what type of flexibility you are looking at. Okay, and then let's say you want to gamify the whole HR process. Consider the employee experience. Okay, now the employee life cycle. Okay, your employee life cycle. Nyo, 
each life cycle gives rise to an employee journey, uh, employee experience or an employee journey map. Okay? So consider nyo ngayon, ano ba yung mga behaviors that you would want your employees to have during each stage of their employee life cycle or each part of the employee journey map? Ano yung behavior na gusto nyo? So for example, if or when it comes to, let's say, um, uh, hiring, okay? If they, you can actually include in your gamification framework that if they sign up with the company, they get an additional or they get a starting number of points. They get, let's say, 100 points as a starting point, okay? And then you can call them as novice. Their IDs can have that or they can have in their emails or it, if you have a platform, you can have them do a profile nila na naka-indicate doon na the person is a novice, okay? And you can get, you can have them see kung nasaan sila, how they stand against other employees, okay? Remember when you play, let's say Candy Crush o kung ano pa man, ano yung nakikita nyo doon? Di ba nakikita nyo kung nasaan yung mga friends nyo sa Facebook, kung anong level na sila? You also get to see what other players are doing. Let's say you're not playing um, Candy Crush, but you're playing other games. Yung mga, um, let's say, mga nag, yung, may mga action, okay? Action, actionable games, yung mga naglalaban-laban, okay? Makikita ninyo where your standing is, ano ang worldwide ranking mo, ano ang local ranking mo. So you should also have that kind of approach, okay? You can implement that and make it part of your gamification framework. Now, let's say nandun na kayo sa performance management. So, ang expectation is each time that they're able to hit a certain score, they get an increase in their salary. Include as well that if they get this rating, okay, they can become, yung pwede sila mapunta sa next level. Or once they're able to get a specific uh, rating, they get additional points. And if after after many months, let's say nakaabot na sila, sabi natin ng 10,000 points, they are no longer considered as novice. They can become, they can become let's say, um, paladins. Okay? So, pupwedeng may movement na sila. Even if the company does not have a regular promotion or very fast na promotion because these employees are, are still moving. Okay? Within the gamification framework, nag-iiba yung level nila, nandun pa rin yung interest. Wala man silang actual na promotion, but they are seeing that here, in terms of what I am able to do, I can show that I am able to do this. And then you can even tie it with your performance appraisal. Now, for you to get this percentage of increase, you need to be at, let's say, paragon level. Pwede mo ngayon pagsamahin. Marry the two. It doesn't have to be two separate activities. So if ikaw ay nandungan sa paragon level, yung increase mo instead of just 8%, it now becomes 10%. But for you to get to the Paragon level, you need to make sure that you're able to get, let's say, 100,000 points. Okay? So now the employees will try to push, complete all of these activities um, in order for, get, for them to get additional points para makasampa agad sila doon. You're marrying the two. Now, ano-ano yung mga activities na po pwede yung ilagay? Again, it, this will all depend on your corporate, corporate values. It will also depend sa kung ano ba yung mga behavior that you would like to promote. At ano ba yung mga behavior na nagkakaproblema kayo. So if it's tardiness, put points on anything that has to do with attendance. So if, for example, they were able to complete one month na walang tardiness, they get a number of points. One, uh, let's say naka isang quarter sila na walang tardiness, they get additional points. It's up to you what activities you would like to um, reward. And don't just focus on one area. Focus on all of the areas. You have recruitment or talent acquisition. You have compensation and benefits. You have learning and development. You have all of this. You can actually um, enumerate ano ba yung mga activities that are important within those areas and then put points for each of these activities. Okay? Ayan. Okay. That is actually the last of my slide. Naku, para ano, um, ang natawa si Sharon. Actually, um, mukhang madali si gamification. Okay? But for you to really understand what gamification is about, I would encourage you to play online games. Huwag yung Candy Crush, masyadong ano yun eh, masyadong mababaw. I would encourage you to play Dota um, or if uh, Call of Duty or yung mga Clash of Clans. Um, ano pa ba? 
uh, mobile legends, yan. Laro kayo niyan para naiintindihan ninyo kung paano ba yung paglalaro. The experience itself would also give you an idea how you can form your own gamification. Okay? Hindi siya um, para sa training lang kasi may mga games noon. Hindi po. Okay? That's just games. Games are there in order to provide entertainment. Yung mga icebreakers, they are there to provide entertainment. But gamification is more than that. This is all about promoting a certain set of behavior and rewarding employees who show that kind of behavior and making sure that they see, kahit pa sa kumpanya nyo ay mabagal ng promotion, they see that they are able to um, change level um, based on the activities or the items that they were able to accomplish. And with each change of uh, level, dapat meron yang um, impact to sa number of points. So for example, you can do na pag novice pa lang, wala pang multiplier effect, pero pag ikaw ay nasa, let's say, soldier level ka na, kung ano man yung points mo times two. Pag ikaw ay nakarating na sa paladin level, kung ano man yung points mo, magiging times five na siya. Okay? So you can do something like that. Pero importante is na monitor ninyo yung inyong mga points dahil pag hindi nyo na-monitor yan, you have the killer within your team, magre-reklamo yung mga yan. Okay? Kasi sila yung super competitive of the four types of players. Okay? Ayan. At this point, meron po ba tayong question? I'm opening. Pinangunahan ko na sila Jorina at sila Nedi. At this point, meron po ba kayong question? <laughs> Sorry po. Um, may question po ba kayo para may address po natin? Ako ma may question. Go lang po. Paano man kung di ako marunong mag-ML? <laughs> Ang alam ko talaga candy crush lang. Okay lang yun. Parang ang hirap po eh. Parang sa akin... Ang hirap tapos hindi ka ganoon ka ano sa games. Wala lang, nat na, na, ano lang, natawa lang talaga ako nung in advice na dapat naglalaro kasi hindi ano yan ha, magandang feedback yan, Neddy. Eh, kasi if for example, mas nadadalian ka sa Candy Crush, um ibig sabihin, part of the gamification activity should cater to something as simple as a Candy Crush. Ano ba yung um bakit ka na-attack sa Candy Crush? Kasi meron kang short-term goal na kailangan gawin within a specific time period. Diba? Ma ma clear mo yung board. So how do you apply that in your in gamifying HR? So dapat merong mga challenges that are short-term in nature pero very simple to accomplish. For example, attend ka ng, um, attend ka ng Christmas party, stay ka until the end of the Christmas party para makuha mo yung points. Okay? Or work with work with another person, create a project within a specific period of time and then pag na-approve you get points. Hindi kailangan sobrang compet uh, sobrang tindi. Okay? Kasi most likely you are the type of person na um sabi nga natin kanina, more of an achiever. Ay, more of an a socializer. Okay? You are there for the experience. You're not really competing with people. Wala kang pakialam kung nasaan na sila. Hindi mo tinitingnan kung ano yung standing mo. Ang tinitingnan mo lang is ma-accomplish ito because you're there for the experience. So the framework, the gamification framework should have challenges that cater to people who are not really competitive but they would want to be able to challenge themselves. Sarili ang sina-challenge sa kanila. Hindi yung competitive sila when they see other people, mas gumagaling sila pa nakikita nila na nauunahan sila. May mga ganun. That's the killer type. Ayan. Ano sabi mo, Jorina? Ay, ay, isa lang po masasabi ko tungkol sa talk. It's very, very practical. Honestly, very practical. Why? First of all, in social media, it's basically like a game. Whenever you scroll, there's a rush of dopamine. You get rewarded instantaneously. And that's the idea of gamification. To reward short amounts of uh, challenges, yung mga pag accomplishment challenge. And that really keeps us going. Same uh, same applies to money, how it's a, such a driver of results as well. Now, my question is, Ma'am Rona, in the sense of gamification, what, what do you think or what practices do you think would be best to 
create the gamification process in the HR industry. Right off the bat, uh, what I'm thinking is about accomplishing trainings through gamification and then they will be earning badges. But sometimes, is an online badge enough to make them feel accomplished? What are your thoughts? It depends. It depends on the type of employees that you have. Kasi katulad nga na sinabi ni Neddy kanina, diba? hindi ako mahilig sa ganyan. Ito lang yung gusto ko. Okay? So, it means that, at least in terms of Neddy, clearing short-term goals and being rewarded for that is more important to her than having to go through a lot of things and then at the end of the year, tsaka pa siya magkakaroon ng reward. Okay? Mas, uh, mas okay siya doon sa mga maliliit na bagay na mare-reward kagad siya. So, um, it depends on the type of player um, yung, yung kung paano mo siya gagawin yung framework mo. At the same time, it depends din talaga kung ano yung challenge ng company. You mentioned that off the top of your head, ang naisip mo kagad is um, learning and development. Okay? Kasi doon yung pinakamadaling application ng uh, gamification. And gamification is typically connected with learning and development. Hindi siya connected with, with hindi siya ganun kadalas na connect for example, with performance management or anything like that. So it depends on kung ano ba yung primary concern ng company. You can start with something na small lang siya. doesn't have to be a whole year approach. Po pwedeng start kayo with small challenges and if you're able to accomplish it, you get rewards for that. Yung badges, actually when we created the gamification program for Game Love, the badges came um, during the second iteration na, second implementation na. Yung first implementation, walang mga badges. It's simply points earning. They get points for the activities. And then later on, when we realize na may mga employees na ang tagal bago nila makuha yung points, we realize that we need to put badges. Now, is online badge enough? Not necessarily. It has to be something na pwede nilang ipagmalaki. Okay? Pwede nilang ipakita whether it's online or offline. So online badge will only work if everyone has access to the same intranet. But if the company does not have that, a physical badge should actually be put in place. So in one client that we have, what they did is that they printed, not necessarily printed out. Alam mo yung nilalagay sa mga uniform na logo, yung, yung mga patch, <laughs> yun. So may mga patch sila na ganun that you can actually um, attach dun sa workstation mo. So the workstation itself um, became some sort of a, a, a place where they can put whatever badges or trophies they have already earned. Parang di ba pag, pag Christmas party tas nanalo yung isang group ng best performer o kaya pag, pag sports fest nanalo sa basketball. Di ba yung trophy noon tinatabi nila sa kanila? Kahit na yung trophy, binili lang nyo lang naman sa raon at alam naman natin na pwede kayong bumili anytime sa raon. But because... There is a, a line there that that's, that's everyone know. Kami ang nanalo last year. Ayan. Then dun yung pride. So you can also do that with the badges. The badge has to be something that's significant for everyone and everyone can easily understand na ay, sila yung nakakuha ng pinakamataas na points sa area na to. So po pwede na nakalagay doon. Highest number of points. Ayan. And then they can attach that to their workstation or kung saan clearly visible sa ibang mga employees para pag may dumaan, pwede na ipagmalaki. Kami nanalo nito. Okay? Yun po. Any other question from our attendees via Zoom or Facebook? Sa mga Facebook po natin dyan na nanonood, if you have question, please do chat para pumasagot ng ating speaker mentor. Anything po about HR at about the topic today? Because syempre si Ma'am Rona, alam naman natin na ang porte rin ni Ma'am Rona is compensation and benefit kasi talagang mentor ko siya doon sa compensation and benefit. Pag may tanong ako si Ma'am Rona, ang tanungan ko. Di ba Ma'am Rons? <laughs> I have another question, Ma'am Rona. Yes, Regarding ma this, it's uh, implementing the gamification process. It's more likely to be in ano, in the scope of change management, especially if the organization is not technically adept. Now, how would you implement a gamification process in a non-techy organization? Okay. Pag non-techy organization, of course, kalimutan na natin yung online platform. 
you won't have that. But invest on a lot of Manila paper or cartolina. Kasi you can put that in your bulletin board or in any open space na available or visible sa lahat. Okay? Make it simple. So I mentioned earlier that you would need to have badges, you would need to have tro trophies, you need to have different levels. Simplify the approach. Huwag muna yun. Okay? Huwag muna kayong pumunta doon. So you can start with just points earning. When they are able to do something, they are able to get points. Okay? Make sure that each of the activities na merong makukuhang points is clearly defined. Alam ng mga employees ano yung mga activities and when they are going to get the points. And then make sure that you have someone who monitors it, okay? And who is very good in monitoring para hindi nagbibigay ng double points. You can start ng ganun kasimple lang. And then the, let's say, the leader, uh, the, the leaderboard gets updated at the end of each week or the end of each day kung kaya. Okay? So it doesn't have to be super um, lucky na, na project. And then you can limit it. Start first with learning and development kasi yun yung pinakamadali na implement Start first with that. And then if you're seeing that people are becoming more and more interested, add. Add kayo ng add ng kung ano pa yung mga activities that you would like to reward. Okay? Huwag kayong mag-aim na isang bagsakan lahat. But more than that, make sure that your employees are also into gamification. Kasi, usually kasi pag non-tech, hindi ganun nila naiintindihan kung ano yung gamification. Okay? Which is why you need to simplify everything. Make it a simplified approach. Okay? Don't call it gamification. Just let them know that they get points for, for doing something. So, for example, in one company that I worked with, Nakochehan, um, and this was way, 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 way before na uso ang gamification. Um, ang ginagawa namin is, uh, meron lang kaming set of activities within the sales department. Okay? If you're able to submit the report, you get 10 points. If you're able to um, close a sale amounting to XXX, you get a point. If you're able to get a fleet account, you get a point. And then all of these points at the end of the month, uh, update namin yung Excel file, o post namin sa bulletin board, person with the highest number of points gets an incentive. It can be as simple as that. Okay? Pwedeng ganun siya kasimple. You can start with that. And then once the employees um, become more and more interested, yan, pwede mo na ngayon dagdagan ng dagdagan. So sama mo na ngayon pati yung attendance. Sama mo na pati yung performance appraisal. Sama mo na pati yung mga, um, let's say, learning and development. Unti-unti, huwag isang bagsakan. Make sure that the employees first understand why you're doing this. They're able to adhere to it. They are able to play along dun sa inyong framework. And then tsaka nyo siya ngayon, palakihin ng palaki. Get their input, ask them what they feel should be improved. And then yun, tsaka nyo siya i ano ipagandahin pa lalo. But connect it to an incentive. Okay? Doesn't have to be na yung points ay convert nila, but it has to be na yung points merong mangyayari doon. If I am the highest scorer, I would expect something because I am the highest scorer. Okay? So start with something as simple as that. Actually, ma'am, yan yung magiging ano, engagement ko for starting January 2023. Kasi this good, year, good. medyo... Mag-umpisa kami sa attendance kasi syempre attendance yung maging, nagiging unang concern. Then learning and development at uh, saka yung mga iba pang activities na ginagawa namin para see to it na everyone will be joining and be engaging to all employees. Ayun. Maganda yan. Maganda yan. Kasi once na ma-reignite ma yung pagiging bata ng mga empleyado when they are playing and they get to enjoy it, magtutuloy-tuloy yan. And sila na mismo maghahanap at sila na mismo magsasuggest ng kung ano pa yung pupwedeng mag- Ay, kailangan abangan nila yung sa amin kasi may mga trip to something pa kami. At the o, diba? At the year, o, diba? Pag naka- Alam, pinakamatindi nun, ano eh, 5,000 na gift certificate from Philippine Airlines. Kaya talagang, ano, excited sila. Mano, mano na rin yun, ha? Um, pwede ka nang makarating ng, ano, dun, ng Cebu, Iloilo. <laughs> Yes ma'am, balikan na yun. Babalikan. Wag lang Singapore kasi medyo mahal. Oh, wag, medyo mahal yun. Medyo mahal yun. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, how about Ma'am Sharon, Ma'am Joan, Ma'am Jean, mga kakilala natin talaga namang nandito sa para patuloy na laging sumusuporta sa atin sa HR Gala Barzon. Do you have any question pa, suggestion, or o di kaya yung mga ginagawa nyo, experience nyo with your company, gamifying process yung engagement nyo? Baka meron kayo. How about you, Ma'am Jorina? Meron ba kayong ganyan? Or plano palang gawing ganyan? For our gamification process, may plano na akong gawin. Hindi ko palang nagagawa. It's sending sales leader boards. Matagal ko na siyang plano. Every week, then every time na merong... So, para every week siya pinapakita or every other day. Para nagkakaroon ng competition in between the branches sa sales. So, syempre, of course, as as Ma'am Rona did mention, we are all competitive in nature, just in different wavelengths, di ba? <laughs> true, true, true. So, I think I'll just share my screen, Ma'am Rona. Pwede po po pa. Wait lang po. Uh... Ayun. Ayun. <laughs> Okay. Ma'am Jorina, please do the honor. Of course, HR Calabarzon Group presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Ma'am Rona Dale Florentino for sharing her invaluable knowledge and expertise as a resource speaker for the 69th HRE Knowledge entitled The Future of HR Gamifying the Process via Zoom and Facebook Live at 2.30 p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. given this 17th day of September 2022, signed by Nedi Estrella, the founder, and Jerina Caparal, the co-founder. Ma'am Rona, we thank you so much for this wonderful and amazingly fun learning because gamification, grabe talaga. It's been... I think it was implemented 2000s pa nga eh, but still, we are, it's always ever-evolving. Hindi ba, Ma'am Ma Nedi? Yes. Medyo, medyo old, old passion lang po ang inyong lingkod. Kaya hindi ako masyadong nag-gagamify. <laughs> <laughs> hindi kasi ako masyadong competitive. Uh, parang I'm, I am just happy what, kung ano yung kaya ko at kung ano yung meron ako. But I see to it that I give everything I could sa mga ka-HR ko. Pero hindi ako nakikipag... Hindi naman sa ayoko makipag-compete. Iba lang yung level mo talaga. No? Iba lang talaga yung level ko kasi medyo na, natutunan ko rin yan sa parents ko na to be contented of what, what God have given you. Pero syempre, kahit nga hindi ako maging com competitive, parang feeling ko nagiging competitive ako kasi sa dami nang sumusuporta sa HR Calabarzon. Di ba, Ma'am Jorina? Yan, syempre. Years, we are now reaching 8,000 600 members in HR Calabarzon for just two years. Kaya po medyo nagle-level up. Talagang sumasama ako sa ating mga speaker mentor. Pati Singapore, sinamahan ko. <laughs> Para mag-level up. Kasi ayoko naman pong masabi rin ng ating mga ka-HR na hindi rin ako nag-exert ng effort para to learn more. Ayan. Dahil dyan, Ma'am Dorina. Yes. Tsaka na-miss ko talaga si Sir Dave Ulrich, mami. <laughs> Hindi ako makamove on doon. But, uh, syempre, kailangan pa natin mag-move on ng konti. Ma'am Jorina, baka makalimutan ko ang ating mandatory picture taking. Okay. Please turn on your videos para makita ang napakagandang mukha at napakapogi. Ayan, no? parang artistahin talaga. Oh. Pa-signature naman. Pa-autograph pala. <laughs> Si Ma'am Susan, mukhang nasa office, naka-face mask. Okay, dito na tayo sa first. One, two, three, smile. And sa second. One, two, three. Okay. Ayan. Okay, mag-share lang ulit ako ng screen. 
Muli Ma'am Ma Rona, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagpapaunlak sa amin na makasama namin kayo for another full of another afternoon full of learning together with Sir Marvin and Ma'am Rona. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsuporta ng ating mga Philippine HR Group Board of Members sa pagbibigay niyo ng oras niyo at ng inyong learning at experience and expertise sa aming mga ka-HR sa Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon. Muli sa ating mga ka-HR, kung gusto po natin makakuha ng e-certificate para sa po sa talk ni Sir Marvin kanina at sa talk ni Ma'am Rona ngayon, please do scan this QR code. Scan nyo lang po, lalabas na po dyan ang link at pipilapan po natin yon at doon nyo po i-attach ang inyong proof of payment na minimal fee of 100 pesos. Ang e-certificate po ay ipapadala namin sa inyo via email after 7 working days. Hindi po kasama ang Sabado, Linggo at Holiday. Ang e-certificate link po ay open hanggang Thursday ng alas 5 ng hapon next week. At ang payment po ay tatanggapin natin hanggang Wednesday next week at 5 p.m. Ma'am Jorina, do we have any other uh, paalala? Yes, of course. Siyempre, kailangan nating ipaalala sa ating mga ka-HR na next week na ang last session natin sa ating back-to-back -back learning with Ma'am Doreen Cooper and Ma'am Daisy Kayanta. Excited ka na ba, Ma'am Nedi? Yes, Ma'am. Another two jump-pack personnel and HR professional ang mga kasama natin dahil kasama rin sila sa top 30 influential people of LinkedIn. Hindi po ba? Mga magagaling uh, na leaders dito po sa Pilipinas. Sila po ang top, kasama po sa top 30 influential and top leaders in the Philippines through LinkedIn. Di ba? Talaga namang hindi ka ba ma-excite na makasama natin ng isang Ma'am Durin at isang Ma'am Daisy? Parang kailangan ko ulit na nakatayo. Di ba, Ma'am Ma Ma'am Dorina, nakatayo na talagang nga kaganyan. Talagang excited ako sa bawat talk ni Ma'am Dorin dahil talaga namang makikita mo ang kanyang grace at galing sa pagpapaliwanag ng kanyang talk. How about of you, Ma'am? Of course. And of course, may special treat tayo sa next week's session. At gusto mo na ba sabihin, Ma'am Nedi? Actually, treat sana natin ngayon yun eh. Kaya lang... Wala eh, parang ang galing kasi ng speaker natin this afternoon eh. Talaga oh, masyadong klaro eh. Kaya wala silang masyadong question. So sa mga ka-HR natin na attend next week, magbibigay po kami ng free attendance and e-certificate sa top. Ilan ang sa first mo, three. First three. three. First three na magtatanong sa each speaker natin sa darating na Sabado. And Yon. syempre, meron din tayong raffle. Abangan na nila yan. May raffle po tayo. At mga iba pang surprise na ipamimigay with syempre mga surprise special guests na speaker mentor din natin ng mga nagdaang dalawang taon para personal na batiin at i-congratulate ang HR Calabarzon. Okay, muli ulit sa aming lahat from the volunteers, from the co-founder and the founder, Ma'am Nedi. Maraming salamat sa inyong walang sawang pagsusuporta sa HR Calabarzon. Two years na. And see you next week for the last session. Bye-bye. Bye po. Thank you, Ma'am Rona. Bye po sa mga ka-HR. We will still post our link for attendance until... Exactly 4 p.m. para po makuha ng ating mga kasamahang ka-HR. Stand by mga ka-HR! Bye po sa iba! Sorry. <laughs>